Hello and welcome to the Living Rooms and uh, to our Sunday Sermon. And uh, I hope that you've managed to stay with us over the last six weeks when we've been going through the, the Bible series, a series of videos which takes us through the Bible from the very beginning, from the book of Genesis through to the book of Revelation, from the beginning to the ending. And uh, we don't do it in any great depth, but perhaps for you, maybe if you're not really a Bible student, then to watch these videos, uh, you'll have been able to see and to understand uh, things that you've never really uh, understood before about the Bible. Maybe the Bible has been a kind of closed book, a, a difficult book, a hidden book to you, and you haven't understood that there is actually a, a, an overall picture, that there is a big story, uh, and we've been trying to unpack that big story over the last few weeks and discovering that right at the centre of the Bible is the most important person of all, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who came to be the saviour of the world. Well, this week we are at session seven, which is actually our last session, and it's entitled Hope and Home. And it's really pointing us forward and it's taking us uh, through the New Testament, ultimately to the, the book of Revelation, the final book in the Bible. Well, hope is something that's really important. W without hope, uh, our lives are, are very poor indeed. Uh, and hope is something that seems to be almost hardwired by God into our hearts. If I was looking for a definition, well, the, the, the dictionary definition would be something like this, that hope is a feeling of expectation. It's a desire for something to happen, something that's going to satisfy us, something that's going to make us happy. But if I look for a, a Bible definition for the word hope, it would be something like this. Hope is the, the confident expectation. It's something that's really almost certain that what God has promised he will do, it's actually going to happen. What he has promised in the Bible is actually going to take place. And God makes many wonderful promises. And uh, I suppose if I was, if I was to summarize, sum, summarize the, 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 the biblical definition of hope, it's found in the word faith. Well, because we live in a broken world, we all have a yearning in our lives. We've got a desire for something uh, that's better, for our lives and our circumstances to be better than what they are today. And uh, right now, for example, uh, some of the things that we desire and hope for is perhaps more freedom as we're locked down in our houses and, and, and we're limited to doing very little. We're not able to go out very much. We're not able to travel very far. And, and we long for more freedom. Freedom for holidays this year. Are we going to be able to get away on holiday in 2021? Freedom just to travel around uh, without any restrictions. Uh, freedom for uh, health. We're yearning to be to be free of, of the, the, the possibility of catching coronavirus. And, and we see that possibility now with, with the release of, of the vaccines. And my wife and I, we were vaccinated uh, last weekend uh, against coronavirus. But that's not the only disease that might trouble us. There is so much that seems to, to cram into our lives and to restrict us and to restrain us and to concern us. And, and, and we yearn for hope, for something better, something to look forward to. Well, that's the story of the book of Exodus that really took us back, I think, to the, the second week of the Bible series. And it's a wonderful story of, of the people of Israel who are living in the land of Egypt. And uh, it's a place where they've become slaves. Uh, they, they have really no freedom at all. Until finally, God, through their leader Moses, sets the people miraculously free. They've been set free. They begin this journey 
that's going to last for 40 years. And it's going to be tough, it's going to be difficult, it's going to be painful. Um, but, but they're looking forward. They've got a hope in their hearts. It, they're thinking about the promised land, the, the land that God has promised to them. And when they send out spies to spy the land, uh, they come back with, with some of the evidence of how wonderful the, the land of Canaan or the land of modern day Israel really is. Uh, they, they bring back the, the bunches of grapes and, and so many other good things that are there. It really was to be their promised land. And that sustained them and kept them going through these 40 long years. We all need hope yearning for something that is better. And that really is the story of the Bible. When, when I was young, uh, I grew up on the other side of Scotland, in, in the West Coast, in a place called Kilmarnock. And uh, our home was uh, right at the, the western edge of Kilmarnock. It, it was at the bottom of a hill, and uh, next to our house was fields. And, and I remember clearly, as I was young, that you could look straight out across from our house, straight west, and we could see the hills of the coastline and the island of Arran uh, on the River Clyde. And a, a beautiful warm summer's day, it, it just looked so beautiful and so appealing. You just wanted to be there. And when I, I was young, uh, we didn't have a car. Our parents didn't have a car. In fact, there were very few cars in, in the late 1950s. But uh, I had an uncle and aunt, Uncle Jimmy and Aunt Nanny, and they had a car. And occasionally, just very occasionally, in the summertime, they would come and they would collect my mother and my sister and I, and we would go for a trip in the car. And I can still picture it uh, to this day of, of my sister and I in, in, a, in a nice day. We would be outside, maybe on a Saturday, and we would be hoping that Uncle Jimmy would come with his cars, with his car. And I remember one day seeing his Morris Minor coming over the hill, and, and my heart just leapt. I was so excited. I think my, my, my feet were fitted with springs. I was jumping so high. I was so excited because Uncle Jimmy was coming to take us for a trip. And, and maybe, maybe just he would take us onto a ferry and we would go across onto the island of Arran and we would play around in the beaches, in the sea, and it was just so wonderful. You see, we lived in that expectation, hoping that Uncle Jimmy would come and he would take us to the beach. And uh, that just sums up, I think, what we're going to be thinking about today. All of us have got hopes in our hearts, things that we are looking forward to. And there is nothing better, nothing more exciting than uh, the hope that we receive when we read the promises of the Word of God. Well, I want to read uh, some verses from 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Listen to these words, will you? No eye has seen no ear has heard, no human mind has conceived the things that God has prepared for those who love him. These are the things God has revealed to us by his Spirit. Isn't that wonderful? Our eyes have never seen, our ears have not heard, our human minds have not conceived the things that God has laid up for those that love him. You know, I, I love to go on holiday, and of course, at the moment, you're not able to go on holiday. And, and living in a cold country, I love when we might be able to go abroad and, uh, and just get some heat, particularly during the winter months. And then, of course, the holiday's over very quickly. And, and if you're anything like me, actually, by the end of, of a week or 10 days, you're really looking forward to being back home again. But then, uh, after a little while, you're looking forward to another holiday and maybe a better holiday, something that's going to make you even happier. But we're told here that, that, that what God has got in store for us, and we're going to be thinking about it in the video, in the book of Revelation, we're told that there's going to be a new earth 
and what is described to us, what God has in mind for his people, those who follow the Lord Jesus, is, is unbelievable to our earthly minds, is beyond our wildest dreams. So we're going to discover in this last episode uh, what God has in store for us. And uh, Andrew Ollerton, who, who wrote the, the series, he's going to take it this week, the final episode, and he's going to be explaining that there is hope for all of us. There's hope if we, we come to put our faith in the Lord Jesus. There's a hope that's in the far horizon, a hope after death, that there can be life after death, eternal life after death. And, and, and it's exciting and it's perfect and it's a fitting finale to the end of this series. But Andrew also explains that, you know, the hope that God gives isn't all in the future once we die, but there is hope here and now. And there's another verse that I would like to read to you. And it's found in the book of Isaiah chapter 40. And it's, it's tucked away right at the end of the chapter, verse 31. And it says this, that those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. That's a great promise, isn't it? Even for an old guy like me to hear that when I often feel tired and weary, that when I put my hope in the Lord, he will renew my strength day after day. It's almost as if God is saying, I'll keep you young. I'll keep you young. I will renew your strength. Trust me. You're going to soar on wings like eagles. Uh, you will run and not grow weary. You will walk and not be faint. I don't know about you, but I want some of what God has promised to give to us. That's the hope I want. And uh, it's centered in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And these things start to work out in our lives when we put our trust in him and his Holy Spirit comes to dwell in us. And we begin to act like eagles. We soar above this world in our hearts. And we're not troubled by the things that used to trouble us and bear us down and affect us physically and mentally. We get released from that because we begin to see things the way God sees them through God's wonderful perspective. So please watch the last episode now. Uh, if you're part of the church here, you will already have received the password to allow you to watch uh, the final episode. If you're watching and you, you don't receive the password automatically, please get in touch with me. Uh, you can do that through the website at www.thelivingrooms.org or you can email me at inquiries at thelivingrooms.org. But please do get in touch with me if you think that I can help you in any way at all. I'd also like to, to give you the offer of receiving one of these magazines. It's called Hope, Appropri appropriately enough, uh, when we think about our subject being Hope Today. This is a magazine called Hope, and it's very colourful, and uh, it's just a beautiful magazine, and uh, full of pictures, beautiful pictures, and it's got uh, really wonderful um, chapters and verses from the Bible that will really encourage you and, and fill you with hope as you read these wonderful words that actually come from the mouth of the living God. And I love, love just to be around hope-filled people, people that know Jesus as their saviour. And uh, I'd like also to offer you this magazine uh, or this newspaper, it's called Good News. And um, it, it's published every month, and we receive a few copies every month. And it's full of people who are full of hope. And, and when I read this paper, it just encourages me so much as I read their stories. 
of what God has done in their lives. And, and, and many of these stories are about people you would know, well-known people. Uh, and in this particular uh, edition, it uh, is the story of Bobby Ball, who, who uh, died recently, but he wonderfully became a Christian uh, when he was an older man, and it transformed his life. And uh, it, his story is in here. His life was no joke, so he got a new one. He got a new life when he put his trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, thank you for being with me. Uh, we'll still be here again next week, and I'll be back again um, to, to give you more Bible teaching. It won't be followed by a video this time, so I'll be speaking to you slightly longer than I am this afternoon. So God bless you all, and let me just pray with you uh, before I leave you. Our Heavenly Father, we come to you and we thank you that you are a God who is a hope-giving God. We remember that in your word, the Bible, it says that when we are without the Lord Jesus Christ in this world, we are really without hope. We can never be fully satisfied. But we thank you that the Lord Jesus Christ, when he comes into our lives, he brings satisfaction to our hearts, to our souls. He gives us real purpose. He gives us real purpose. He gives us a destiny. And he came to give us everlasting life through giving his life. And as we trust him, we're set free because our sins are forgiven and we are made right in your eyes. Peace is made before a holy God between you and us. Father, we thank you that that was your plan and it's the plan that's revealed in your word, the Bible. And I just pray for everyone uh, who is listening today and watching today and who will go on now to watch this final episode of the, the Bible series, Hope and Home. I pray, Lord, that, that your spirit would just be moving and that everyone who watches, their hearts would almost leap as they discover the goodness of God, the God that loves each and every one of us so much that you gave your only begotten Son, so that when we believe in him, we might not die, we might not perish eternally, but that we might have ever lasting life. So Lord, just simply, we want to say thank you. And I just ask now your blessing on all who are watching, on, on all and upon their families, in the precious name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Well, thank you once again for watching and uh, I hope you will join me again next week for the next sermon. And God bless you all.